Hello, I want to welcome you to one of the esoteric lessons of the spiritual high school, like it was given from Rudolf Steiner, 1924. And it's today and now it will be the fourth lesson, the repetition lesson. So it's a fourth repetition lesson. And like I want to point out, uh, every time is this is something what uh, we really can uh, call it uh, a divine service and uh, worship to God. It's a Christian Michaelic uh, worship. So please, if possible, take care um, how uh, you can um, watch this and how you can work on the mantras and how you can be in a situation that it's possible for you to be very concentrated uh, to work on these uh, mantras and on the text which is given by this high school. And in the beginning I and at the end I will uh, say um, some words from Rudolf Steiner. At the beginning, three parts of the foundation stone meditation. Because it prevails the Father Spirit of the Highs, creating being in the world depths, seraphim, cherubim, drones, let resound from the heights what echoes in the depths and what in the echo of the depth deep the secret of the heights sound it again this speaks ex deo nascimur this are hearing the elemental spirits in the east, in the west, in the north, in the south, may man hear it. Because it prevails the Christ will in the vicinity, in the rhythms of the world, soul blessing, through the spirits, Curiotetis dynamis exusiae, let from the east in flame what through the west takes shape, and the fire of the east that receives its shape from the west, it speaks in Christo Morimur. This are hearing the elemental spirits. In the east, west, north, south, may man hear it, because it prevails the spirit, world, thoughts, in the world being, light invoking. Archai, archangeloi, angeloi, let from the depth demand. What will be granted in the heights? And if it is understood correctly, as it resounds from Achai, Archangeloi, Angeloi, when requested from the depth, what can be granted in the heights? Then it speaks through the world, Per Spiritum Sanctum Revivissimus. This are hearing the elemental spirits in the east, west, north, south. May man hear it. The repetition lesson four from September 13, 1924. My dear sisters and brothers, it is not possible every time to give the corresponding introduction about the task 
and meaning of the school and about membership in the school. Therefore also a large number of new members are again present. It will not give the introduct I will not give the introduction, but will continue from where we left off last time. And I must remind the members who are to give the previous mantras to the newcomers in the usual way that they must do, do so under the conditions which I will mention at the end of this lesson. They should also describe the conditions for acceptance in this school. We shall begin by again letting our souls hear the words which are spoken by all the beings and possessed of the world to the human being who wishes to be worthy of the name and who has an unbased sense that in them lies the exhortation to seek true self-knowledge, a self-knowledge that leads to knowledge of the world. And we are exhorted from all sides, from all the beings of all the kingdoms of nature, and all the kingdoms of spirit to this self-knowledge in the true sense of the word, which is the path to world knowledge. Thus all the beings of nature and of the spirit exhorted human in the past, exhort them in the present, and will exhort humans in the future. These exhorting words that urge the soul of man, if he wants to hear them from all sides, from the east and the west, from the south and the north, from above and below, may also today begin to describe what this Michael School should mean. O oh man, know yourself, so resounds the world word. You hear it so powerful, you feel it spirit wasteless who speaks so world fastly, who speaks so felt heartily, does it act through space distant radiation, in your senses being experience, does it sound through time's wave weaves into your life's evolving stream, is it you yourself who in space feeling, in experiencing time, creating the world, feeling foreign, sensing in space's emptiness of soul, because you have the force of thinking, losing in the time-destroying stream. We have seen how the seeker of knowledge approaches the guardian of the threshold who, after the seeker of knowledge has stood there shattered by the impressions of the three beasts which show the true nature of his present willing, feeling and thinking as they appear before the visage of the spiritual world, how he is gradually lifted up by the guardian of the threshold. And we have already heard what the guardian of the threshold speaks to the one he wants to lift up, how he points on the one hand above where a battle is taking place between the light and the dark powers in the arm 
from which the force of our thinking streams into our humanity. The guardian of the threshold thinks that we need this image. We need, if we wish to feel in the right way, we seeking knowledge the origin of our thinking, the force of our thinking in our humanity, to look up to that realm from which our thinking comes, where however a terrible battle rages between the powers of light, the light which wants to guide thinking along the right track, and the powers of darkness, who want to divert thinking from the right track and lead it a long path of aberration. Our thinking is rooted above. We must know it to be so rooted if we want to be knowledge able in the battle between light and darkness. And then, if we understand what striving towards the light is, we find that we must remain erect. And we must know that we are involved with the battle between light and darkness. The light, light wants to bring us to a state of spiritual powerlessness, so to speak. The darkness wants to make us lose ourselves in matter. But we must seek the state of equilibrium between them, not letting ourselves be overtaken by light, nor letting the darkness transform us into matter, but to stand firmly in our selfhood and find the equilibrium for our thinking between light and darkness. And then, when we consider our feeling, we must see in that realm which reaches out into the horizontal, into the cosmic distances, how we are involved in the battle between the warmth of soul and the coldness of soul. In the warms of soul are working all the luciferic powers, the power of beauty, the powers of brightness, the powers who want to give us divine forces without our own effort. We would be unfree and lacking independence if they were to catch us. But on the other side are the powers of cold, the coldness of soul that is permitted by Arimanic beings who would cause us to lose our self in the cold. We must find the equilibrium between the spiritual blissfulness into which the forces of warmth, the forces of heat, the fire wish to bring us, and that region into which, with enormous all-embracing intellectuality, the harmonic powers wish to seduce us with coldness. We must maintain our equilibrium between both of them in order to find the right sense of feeling for knowledge. Then, when we observe our willing, we must look below. There is the realm of the earth and of gravity from which the force of our will comes for our earthly life. For the earth does not only contain the force of gravity, spiritually it also contains the force of human will. Once again we stand face to face with two powers, the powers of life and the powers of death. We can succumb with our willing 
to the powers of life. Then it is as though the powers of life want to size us, use our will forces in the cosmos. We must hold ourselves erect and find the equilibrium between these powers of life and the powers of death, the latter wanting to confine us in a constricted space in order to eternally interweave our will with materiality. The guardian of threshold exhorts us at the point to maintain ourselves in equilibrium between light and darkness, in equilibrium between warmth and cold, in equilibrium between life and death. For we may not only belong to the power of the light. In light alone we would be benumbed, dazzled. We may not devote ourselves to the darkness alone, for then we would lose ourselves in the substance of darkness. We must strive for what is striven, striven for in all the world. Wherever you look, my sisters and brothers, light and darkness intermingles. Look at our hair, the light blends in it in our head, but it must be permeated with darkness. Otherwise your hair would be entirely rays of light. Look at your whole body. It is woven of life, light, but it could have no solidity if darkness were not also interwoven in it. Look at any object, my dear sisters and brothers. Blossoming blends, they are created from light. But the powers of darkness must press up from the soil so that from light and darkness what the plants represent in their solid consistency the nature of plants on earth can be found just as in all of nature a balance between light and darkness is found so must the human being strive physically for in the spiritual world if we want to be a real seeker after knowledge. And it is also the case for equilibrium between warmth and cold, and for equilibrium between life and death. So there are the yawning abyss of being, still looking as behind us, the gleaming colorful kingdoms of nature to which we belong with our senses become darker and darker as it becomes clear to us that our real being is not revealed by all the wondrous sensory nature nature nor is it what leads us to self-knowledge in front of us like a black wall it's still the border of the dark realm into which we must go, so that there will be light within by means of the force which we ourselves bring. We are still standing at the yawning abyss of being, but have become bolder in confidence that through the guardian's admonitions we will grow wings to cross the abyss in order to enter the darkness and there is light in the darkness this is one of the last of the guardian's admonitions it battles the light with dark forces in that realm where your thinking want to enter into the spirit being 
you find striving toward the light, yourself taken from you by spirit. You can, when darkness entices you, losing the self in the stuff. It battles the wounds with the coldness. In that realm where your feeling wants to live in spirit weaving, you find laughing the warmth, yourself in spirit pleasure blown away. You can when coldness hardens you, in suffering atomize the self. It battles the life with the death. In the dream where your will want to act in spirit creation, you find grasping life, yourself in spirit forces disappearing. You can, if death forces, is tamming you in nothingness, cramping the self. And the mantras will be written on the blackboard. The guardian at the abyss exacting equilibrium. It battles the light with dark forces. In that realm where your thinking want to enter in the spirit being, you find striving towards the light, yourself taken from you by spirit. You can when darkness entices you, losing the self in the stuff. It battles the warmth with the coldness. In the dream where your feeling wants to live in spirit weaving, you find laughing the warmth, yourself in spirit pleasure blown away. You can when coldness hardens you, in suffering atomize the self. It battles the life with the death. In that realm where your will want to act in spirit creation, you find grasping life, yourself in spirit forces disappearing. You can, if death forces is tamming you in nothingness cramping the self. You will find, my dear sisters and brothers, that if you devote yourself to this mantric world with the right conviction and with peace in your soul, with a feeling of sacrificial devotion to the spirit, you will find that what instills, instills equilibrium, the soul is present in the words themselves. As seekers after knowledge, we stand now before the guardian of the threshold at the yawning abyss of being. Next, the guardian of the threshold teaches us how we wanting to Choose the right direction between light and darkness, warmth and cold, life and death, can find our own self. In no other way can we do this, my dear sisters and brothers, than by pondering the following. In order to achieve true knowledge, it is necessary that we become one with the world, that we have feeling respecting the world as a finger 
What if it could feel for itself, feel itself to be a part of entire human body? If the finger could feel for itself, it would say, I am only a finger, as long as I am a part of the human body. When the human body's blood is my blood, when the human body's pulsation is my pulsation, if I am cut off, I keep being a finger, the finger loses its meaning when separated from the organism to which it belongs. <coughs> and only as part of which it can be a finger. The human being must learn to feel in this way in respect to the entire world. We are members of the spirit, soul, organism of the entire world and only seem to be separated from the spirit, soul, organism of the world. We must connect in the right way to the spirit, soul, organism of the world and must know that around us the elements, earth, water, air, fire are spread and we must learn to feel at our bodily nature for it is composed of these elements, is at one with these elements. The guardian of the threshold teaches us that we should do this and how. Just consider exactly what learning streams in those mantric verses the guardian of the threshold has given us which have brought us to the abyss of being. My dear sisters and brothers, think that you tentatively touch some object with your finger. You know that the object is there where you touch it. You touch an object. You have the feeling of being at one with this object. Because at the moment you touch it, the sense of touch is what makes a finger or whatever you touch it with at one with the object. Now think that you as a whole are like a finger, a touching finger. You are standing on the earth, on the element earth. You are standing here because the earth's main property is the element of gravity. You are touching the earth with the soles of your feet, regardless of whether you are standing on the floor of a room or outside on the bare earth. The point is that you feel in standing that you are touching the earth's gravitational element. You could be standing above on a mountain or on a tower. You sense just as you sense at the tip of your finger, the hard and the soft the warm and the cold, in the process of touching, you sense the unity in your soles of your feet, where you sense the weight of gravity. The guardian of threshold says this when he admonishes us in the following way. O oh, man, Touch and sense in your body's whole being how earth's forces support your existence. That earthly forces are your support, that the earthly element supports us so we don't sink down is what the guardian of the threshold is telling us now. 
Then he leads us further, so that we not only feel that we are like a whole finger, but that we also feel what is within the finger. It is the element of water, of fluid. For everything which is in the human being, something also known by physical science, is born from the fluid element. Solid is isolated from fluid, as ice is from water. We must rise to the sensation of the element of water. Out in the world, everything is of a fluid nature. Our own formative and shaping forces are formed in us by the fluid element. Just as we feel the earth as our support, we also feel that we feel our organs, that we are formed and shaped as human being out of the fluid element. It creates the formative forces for us. Our lungs and our livers are solid formed, but they solidify from out of the fluid element, from out of the element of water. Just as we feel the earth to be our support, we also feel in that we feel our organs, that the water element forms us as a human being. The water forces are our sculptures. The earth is our support. Therefore, the guardian of the threshold admonishes us. O oh man, experience in your touchings, whole circle. We can touch everywhere, but when we feel the touching itself. O oh man, experience in your touchings, whole circle. How water beings are the shaper of your existence. Now the guardian of the threshold continues to admonish us. He teaches us how we can also unite with the powers of air. We breath in the air. We know that if we breath in the air in the wrong way we feel it. So it has to do with your, our feeling. We have feeling that makes us fearful, that breach the coherence of our existence. Just as the water element shapes us, so do does the air element care for us. The guardian of the threshold admonishes us. O oh man, feel in the whole weaving of your life, how air powers are caregiver in your existence. Now the guardian leads us farther on to the warmth element, how we feel ourselves united internally with warmth. We feel the earth outside of us as support. We know little about how the water forces shape us. During growth, for example, that stays in the subconsciousness, the powers of air trust themselves in only when they are abnormal, when they don't work normally. But we feel united with warmth when we have the right amount in us. Our souls and our whole being become warm with we feel warmth from without. We stiffen when we must experience cold from without. Warmth and cold are one with us in a completely different way in the elemental world. 
There they are neither merrily supporters nor our sculptures nor our caregivers. They are our true helpers in physical existence. The guardian of the threshold admonishes us. O oh, man, think in the full flow of your feeling how the fire powers are your helpers in existence. If we heed all oh, that is entailed in these demands, we will find the path of consciousness unification of our corporality with the elements. And in different degrees our corporality is one with the elements. At first the earth element supports us in an exterior mechanical way. The earth element is support for us. It is mechanical and exterior. It will become more inward, but still consists of formations which do not reach the soul. Water beings from us are our sculptures. When we become one with the air element, we rise to the level of morality. The air element is no longer a merry exterior designer. It is our caregiver, and our feelings are at anxiety if we do not breathe in the right way. The powers of air are caregivers, warmth and cold are helpers, enable us to be earthly beings. They are fire powers, now ruling at the moral level. The summation of the guardian of the threshold's admonitions with respect to the escalation of the elements. O oh, man, see yourself in the kingdom of elements. The mantra is now written on the blackboard. The Guardian's teaching. O oh man, touch and sense in your body's whole being. Who, how earth forces support your existence. O oh man, experience in your touching's whole circle how water beings are the shape of your existence. O oh man, feel in the whole weaving of your life, how air powers are caregiver in your existence. O oh man, think in the full flow of your feeling, how the fire powers are your helpers in existence. We have here the escalation. Support, sculptures, caregivers, helpers. We also have another escalation. For in a mantric verse, a Every word is in the right place, and there is no word there that only serve to fill an empty space. Everything consists with, with its inner meaning with which we should unite ourselves in meditation on the mantric verse. We have an escalation, touch, experience, feel, think. It is a special escalation, so in meditation we must also sense the inner meaningful structure of such a mantric verse. Once the guardian has said this, he sums it up again in one line. And it is written on the blackboard, 
O man, see yourself in the kingdom of elements. Thus the guardian leads us to an inner experience of the verses through which we can unite our corporality with the elements to which it belongs. Then he guides us further on to the soul. Here he does not point us to the, he does not point us to the elements, earth, water, air, fire. Here he points us to the planets. He points out to us how we should feel about what mutually draws the planet's orbit around the earth, how one planet or another draws the orbit. The orbits have a relationship and speak to each other when the human being rises in his soul to this secret of the universe pointing planetary powers. Then he lives with his soul in the spiritual kingdom of the cosmos, just as he had previously lived with his body in the elemental kingdom. We can only physically feel to be at one with the cosmos if we bring ourselves to live into to life into the kingdom of the planets and their orbits. The guardian of the threshold tells us this with these words. O oh man, let act in the depth of your soul. The wandering stars, world guiding forces. It is written on the blackboard. O oh man, let act in the depth of your soul. The wandering stars, world guiding forces. Again, the guardian of the threshold sums up the direction giving forces in these two lines for how the soul can feel to be at one with the secrets of the planet. O oh man, become being yourself which may, means make yourself existent through the cosmic circling. O oh man, become being yourself through the cosmic circling. The cosmic orbits of the various planets are drawn together into one cosmic orbit. We have the I felt body and soul to be at one with the cosmos, the body with the earthly element, the soul with the planets. If we want the spirit to feel at one with the universe, we can neither look to the elements nor to the secrets of the planet. Rather must we look to the stars, for there is the power with which we must feel our spirit to be at one with in the distant universe. If we wish to feel ourselves to be members of this universe in the true sense, there the cosmos begins to intone the music of the spheres. Therefore the guardian of the threshold admonishes us, O oh man, retain in your spirit's creation the fixed stars, heaven, heralding words. And it is written on the blackboard. O oh man, retain in your spirit's creation 
The fixed stars heaven heralding birds. Again the guardian of the threshold summarizes the requirement in one line. O oh, man, create yourself through jealous style wisdom. Every moment our spiritual existence is a creation of our self. If we sense and feel this in the right way, we are internalized by the guardian of the threshold. We recall how the words of self-knowledge were intoned from old creation still in an abstract form, how they range out to us from all sides of natural and spiritual existence. But now the phrase, O oh man, know that yourself, is clarified in all its parts. It now consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine parts. O oh man, know yourself should be seen as nine rays of light, so to speak, then it will be filled with what our meditation needs. That is how we should feel. And in a certain sense, we should pledge to the guardian of the threshold that we will adhere to this admonition. O oh man, touch and sense in your body's whole being how earth's forces support your existence. O oh man, experience in your touching's whole circle, how water beings are the shape of your existence. O oh man, feel in the whole weaving of your life, how air powers are caregivers in your existence. O oh man, think in the full flow of your feeling, how the fire powers are your helpers in existence. O oh man, See yourself in the kingdom of elements. O oh man, let act in the depths of your soul, the wandering stars, world guiding forces. O oh man, become being yourself through the cosmic circling. O oh man, retain in your spirit's creation the fixed stars, heaven heralding words. O oh man, create yourself through jealous style wisdom. We make a kind of pledge to the guardian of the threshold that we will always adhere to his admonitions, letting them run through our soul as mantras. Again and again we look back and every step we feel bound to remember what is happening on this side of the threshold. And on this side of the threshold, every stone and every plant, every tree, every cloud, every spring, Every rock, every lightning, every thunderstorm has called to us. O oh man, know yourself, so resounds the world, world. You hear its soul powerful, you feel its spirit wasteless who speaks 
the world fastly, who speaks so felt heartily? Does it act through space distant radiation in your senses being experience? Does it sound through times wave with his into your life's evolving stream? Is it you yourself who in space feeling in experiencing time? creating the world, feeling foreign, sensing in spaces emptiness of soul, because you have the force of thinking, losing in the time-destroying dream. Thus, when these words of the guardian of the threshold ring out with full spiritual forces, in this room words which he has, the serving member of Michael's power, the reigning power of our time, when these words ring out, we can be certain because this ex Esoteric school has been founded by Michael's might itself, that Michael is present with his force, with his spirit, with his love, that Michael is psycho-spiritually present among us, and that can be confirmed here where responsibility is felt by the leadership of the school towards the power of Michael, that nothing else streams through the school, then what is present in the holy will of Michael, it may be confirmed by Michael's sign and Michael's seal. This is Michael's sign. And the Michael seal, which confirms the Michael power, enters into the Rosenkruzian training and is thus conjoined with what is being wrought in the Michael school, with Michael seal, which the Rosenkruzian endowment seals in the Rosenkruzian verse accompanied with the seal sign. Ex Deo Nascimur, in Christo Morimur, per Spiritum Sanctum Revivissimus. And that means, I revere the Father, I love the Son. I unite myself with the Spirit. I revere the Father is saying ex Deo Nassimo. This feeling passes through our soul. I love the Son is saying in Christo Morimo. This feeling passes silently through our soul. I unite myself with the Spirit. Is silently felt when saying per Spiritum Sanctum Revivissimus. The mantric verses come to you, my dear sisters and brothers, with the sign and seal of Michael. Ex Deo Nascimur, in Christo Morimur, per Spiritum Sanctum Revivissimus. Thank you very much. And at the end I will say some words of truth from Rudolf Steiner. First, something about the elemental spirits, the elemental beings. As a meditator between the earth and the spirit cosmos, words of admonition. 
knows you dream yourself and avoid awakening. Undine, you think the works of angels and don't know it. Sylphs, the creative power shines for you. You do not suspect it. You feel its power and do not live it. Fire beings, the will of the gods is in your power. You do not receive it. You want it with its power and push it from you. A characteristic of their own being from the elemental beings, the elemental spirits. Gnomes, I hold the root being power. It creates the shape body for me. Undines, I move the water growth force. It creates my life substance. Sylphs, I sold the early fire force. It fills me with the power of being. Fire beings, I endure the power of fire. It redeems me in soul spirituality moral impression of the words of the words that heard. Gnome core, strive to be awakened. Undine, think in spirit. Sylphs, live creatively breathing existence. Fire beings, receive lovingly godly will power. And at the end, some words of truth. God's protecting blessing reigns. Fill my growing soul that it can take hold strengthening forces everywhere. My soul wants to promise itself, the power of love in itself, to awaken full of life, and thus see God's power on their path of life, and work in God's mind with everything my soul has. I say it again in German. Gottes schützender, segnender Strahl erfülle meine wachsende Seele, dass sie ergreifen kann stärkende Kräfte all überall. Geloben will sie sich der Liebe macht in sich lebensvoll zu erwecken und sehen so Gottes Kraft auf ihrem Lebenspfade und wirken in Gottes Sinn mit allem, was sie hat. Thank you very much.